Okay, thank you everyone for coming over again for these lightning talks. Uh, we are next having here Linux test project introduction by Cyril Hribis. Sorry for pronunciation of last name. It was good enough. Okay, so hello, well, welcome to my introduction. So let's start. Well, there is some information about myself and actually it made me feel a bit old when I realized that I've been using Linux for 18 years and also working for SUSE for quite a lot of time and I'm mostly working on kernel automation and stuff. And I've been LTP upstream developers for 2009 actually. So let's start with uh, where it began. Uh, the Linux test project was, was founded by SGI, IBM and uh, these big companies in the year 2000. And the, the picture there is a screenshot from, from web archive because I wasn't around obviously because I was trying to install my first Linux at that time. And uh, in 2001 apparently it contained uh, 100 simple test, uh, syscall tests and few tests so it's collected for, from other sources. Well, historically, LTP had quite a big uh, problems and had, have had a uh, bad reputation until recently. It started to turn much better last few years. But basically, there was no real manpower behind it. Uh, there was uh, no code review. Basically, everything that compiled got in. And yeah, the build system was a mess. And it, it was quite a problematic to even compile the stuff. And even when you compiled it, a fair amount of the test cases was, was failing randomly. But, so it wasn't really useful. And in SUSE, in, in the early times, we had to run it a few times and then filter out all the random failures. And yeah, it was kind of put together for, from different sources, sometimes crazy ones, because obviously, well, what I found out from the comments in the source code that when IBM acquired some of the uh, old proprietary Unixes, they just took the, their test cases and somehow ported it into the LTP. It was quite messy code. And they actually put inside everything they found, found out on the internet. So it was kind of Frankenstein. And sometimes even today the stitches are visible, but it's much better these days. And also one of the problems was that uh, IBM tend to hire junior developers for the task. And it turns out if you want to test the kernel, you really need guys with uh, some background in the computer science and operating systems. And well, students wouldn't do well, good job. So what we have done so far, we spent last few years uh, working on, on the stuff, so now it's much more boring. We have adopted a coding style, we have Git repository, uh, we have code review and mailing list. We also, well, work with the GitHub, so we accept the pull request there as well, and we do quarterly releases with these numbers of patches and developers that show per, per release. And we also use Travis for compile testing the stuff, so even things like cross-compilation, so it's quite nice because now if you take the latest LTP head, it will just compile it just fine. And also we make sure that the latest LTP, the LTP is working on maintained distros. Uh, we basically, before we make a release, we try to compile and run it on everything we care for. Is our Red Hat, SUSE, Debian and stuff like that. And we also have quite nice test library so we do not duplicate code in the test cases. So if you are writing tests that needs uh, something like block device or uh, file system mounted at some point. You just flip a flag in the uh, structure that is describing the test and it's done. And we also have quite a lot of API documentation and tutorials. These are targeted mostly for people who want to write test cases though. And here is the goal. It has been the same from the beginning. We are trying to kind of make sure that the Linux kernel and Lipsyon related stuff works fine. Uh, we do not uh, do any benchmarking. If you're looking into that, there is an excellent test suite for Mel, from Mel Gorman. And there is also a test suite that's general test suite for uh, file system. 
even if it's called F XFS test, that's kind of historical name and nobody bothers to rename it at this point. So if you are looking for testing file system, you should combine LTP with this, that one as well. So what are the challenges? Well, the, the biggest challenge is that the project goal is quite broad and there is obvious disparity between uh, the number of developers that develop Linux kernel libc and LTP. It's kind of problematic because uh, they keep to add uh, syscalls and stuff into kernel and we are still trying to catch up on that. Uh, well, and it's even difficult to estimate how much uh, user space API is there. If you ever seen the excellent book, book from Michael Karisk, the Linux programming handbook or something, it's not, I would say that it's not, an, not even half of it. Nobody really knows what's there. And LTP is, well, kind of large and it's mostly complicated low-level code, so it's a challenge as well. And sometimes there is not even documentation for the kernel interfaces, and when it is, it's, it may be wrong. So I ended up with quite a few patches in manual pages as well when I was fixing the test cases, because sometimes I just found out that the main page is saying something different than the code in the kernel is doing. And also, sometimes the kernel API really changes because if you ever seen Linux, sh Linux shouting the, we do not break the user space on mailing list, what it really means that they would not change any code that is used by user space programs. But it turns out sometimes there is some interface that is really used by just the test cases. In such cases it does not make much sense to keep it if it's broken. So sometimes they break out tests and we have to deal with it. Okay, what's really inside? We do have quite a lot of syscalls test cases. These are mostly unit tests for the syscalls, so uh, they call the syscall and check that it's doing something reasonable. We also feed it invalid inputs and check that it returns some reasonable errors. And then there are some more complicated stuff, but these are mostly unit tests. Then we have a fork of the open POSIX conformance test suite. It was developed separately, but the upstream is dead, so we carried on. And we have uh, started to add various regression tests for Linux CVs. This is quite recent. recent, And we have, well, not that much, but quite a number of these now, even the most important ones. And then we have IO stress test, network-related test cases that needs two machines, and real-time test suites, and various containers, and namespaces and stuff. Okay, what, what are the design goals? We are really trying to keep it simple. So the languages of cho choice are C, and uh, each test is unexecutable, it's self-contained, it runs automatically, and the status is passed and exit value. It's, we are just trying to make stuff sane and easy to use. Well, and this is the question I'm getting quite a lot, and people are asking, well, do we really have to test our kernels with, when the upstream is tested quite a lot and it turns out well when you take the upstream kernel and you start applying patches you will break it sooner or later so you really should test that well and there is a uh, short how to I, I'm just trying to tell you that it's really easy to use LTP these days so if you want to run an LTP test case you just have to download the code and then just compile it just then you can uh, run most of the test cases directly from the source code directory. Uh, some of them need uh, a path to the current directory in the path so they can execute sub-executables. And the shell test cases need uh, a path to the shell library in path, obviously, but that should be, that. Should, should be it for most of the tests. Or you can really uh, install it and use the uh, script that sets up the variables and stuff itself. Uh, well, the actual, the solution that we have in the LTP is quite dated, it works, but I want to work, in, work on the replacement so it's much easier to integrate it into the modern uh, frameworks because this one just, uh, it's a shell script that runs uh, kind of old uh, binary and it produces, uh, well, text files that are 
parsable, but I want to have something that outputs JSON and XML or stuff, so you just plug in uh, that thing into modern CI, it just works. Well, we also have uh, scripts that run the network test cases, and these are, some of them are basic, some of them are, are quite advanced. You can either set up two machines with uh, the same LTP installation and one of them will SSH to the second one and run the network stuff between them, or it can also fall back to namespaces so you can run the network stuff on single machine as well. Well, and that's uh, about it. There are links to the repository mailing list, wiki and IRC. So let's go to the question if anyone has some. Basically, today, if we run it, oh, okay, uh, they are asking about the stability of the test cases. These days, when, when you execute it, sometimes one of the tests may fail and it may be false positive, but we have thousands of test cases, so I would say we are pretty good. We spent something like last six years working on that. Uh, okay, if I do that, I'm, some test cases fail. What do I do? Well, do you, do you collect the failed tests? You can write to the mailing list. People do that from time to time, asking about, hey, this fails and what I'm supposed to do, and somebody will, mostly me, will look into that. Uh, actually, it's, uh, these days it's used on the zero day thingy in Intel, so you will probably not catch that much of the bugs because uh, the automatic framework usually catches them before it gets even to the main line. But yes, you can always talk to us uh, on the mailing list on IRC. I'm on, I'm on the IRC at least during my work time, so. Uh, well, the, the question is if uh, we will be flooded with messages and the answer is uh, we do not test much of the driver specific stuff yet and I'm not sure we will have man manpower for that so I'm pretty sure that we will not be flooded that much because most of the generic problems will show up everywhere and we are running it uh, also into automatic uh, frameworks uh, in SUSE. We are using OpenQA to run the stuff and it's executed well, daily, so. Yeah. 